contain yourself contain mm. myself mm -hmm. you're the type of guy to fart on a podcast <laughs> so many people think this is a podcast they're like hey can we get the audio file oh yeah some people think this is a podcast it's not a podcast guys it's, it's not well it, it is but it's like a video podcast we want you guys to look at our faces when we yes talk. we have to show our faces it's yeah. a very important part of the equation yeah. anyways uh aside from sounding very very weird in the beginning today we're talking about room acoustics can we do something first sure could i just like tighten this, this all is, right go this, ahead this is turning into a bobble head right ahead. here so today we're gonna be talking about room acoustics and why it may matter and some people are already commenting it matters it matters <laughs> what the fuck you talking about anyways demonetized mm -hmm. go on tujin your experience we're just gonna talk about our experiences with it so as audiophiles and people who've experimented with it i guess yeah okay um well one of the things i've noticed mm -hmm. you know without getting like right into the nitty-gritty mm -hmm. when i put room acoustics i mean room treatment yeah into my room mm -hmm. i noticed that i'd have to turn up my speakers louder to compensate for all the dampening i've mm -hmm. done and that actually made me upgrade my amplifier mm -hmm. because I needed more headroom now mm -hmm. to get the same kind of dynamics yeah. and the overall, you know, headroom that I wanted. But did it sound better? Quite honestly, yes. Yeah. And it also helped with random reverbs or yeah. random well, resonances. Well, I can actually explain your, the phenomenon. So I actually had a lot of uh, clients that I complained about that after getting, you know, Vicoustics, which is an acoustic panel company yeah. from me when I used to work at the high-end audio store. And, uh, you know, they will be like, well, now I have to turn it up more. Mm -hmm. And it's not because you have, well, it is because you have dampening, but not yeah. because you have too much dampening. It's um, rather you're getting rid of the reflections. Exactly. So, you know, when you're in a, just imagine yourself in a empty room, right? You yell, you're louder than if you were in a home theater, mm -hmm. like yours, and you yell, right? Yeah. Same volume, you're, you're using the same amount of uh, volume to project, um, but the reflections make it more, it amplifies it. Mm -hmm. That's the right word, amplifies it. So by you know getting rid of the reflections and stuff like that in a stereo setting, of course you're gonna have to you know, get more headroom, need more amplification uh, and so on. So yeah, so that, that's, that's a very valid thing that a lot of people experience. Um, some people just ignore it because they're like, huh, that's weird, but as long as I get music, but yeah, that's that's a very good observation. Yeah. And I guess another thing that I've noticed when I did room room treatment is um, obviously the sound comes down a little bit. Like it, it's not as bright or as mm -hmm. shrill. And I also noticed that imaging in particular is a lot more pinpoint afterwards. Yeah. And I'm assuming just because I got rid of the reflections that might have been interfering with that. The phase. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so like phase issue is, you know, a very big thing actually. Um, actually... Very interesting story. I actually had a, a Patreon consultation not too long ago. I think the most recent one, actually. And he had a problem. And his problem was reflect, uh, not reflections, not getting imaging. And so he had these Strata Gallo speakers and he was not getting imaging. So now I'm not too familiar with that speaker. And I told him I'm not too familiar with it. I know of it. I've heard it. But imaging, don't remember particularly well. But he had multiple issues, and one of them was that he had a monitor in front of him. This was a near field desk setup, and he had them on these stands. And so my first guess was, well, you know, maybe it's hitting the desk. Like, you know, the there's a, maybe there's a reflection off the desk that's interfering with the imaging. Maybe it's the monitor in the middle. And so the uh, I wanted to figure out if it was, you know, the speakers. So. Um, uh, what he ended up doing was he ended up getting because he didn't like the sound of the Stratas to begin with. Uh, he was looking for different speakers. Uh, I suggested him the Kef LS50 Metas if or the Kef LS50 used, um, de you know, depending on his budget, because those speakers image very well. Yeah, quite actual design and they're you know phase uh, coherent and all that good stuff for you know being a dual concentric design. So I suggested it to him. He ordered off Amazon. Uh, to get it quickly and he said she set them up and he said i'm still not getting imaging and i'm that's when i knew i'm just like yeah there's, there's more stuff going on here so i suggested to him uh multiple different things uh first of all was actually making sure that every cable was in phase 
And he, so I, I suggested him multiple steps, but you know, basically that's what, that was one of them. Second thing was actually, you know, putting a piece of foam in front of his um, monitor and doing all sorts of these things. And he finally got imaging. So that to me is what I think is very impressive in room acoustic treatment is you get stuff that you didn't before, like imaging, if that's important to you. Um, but it's not the end of the story. Room acoustic is very, very important when it comes to listening to music, but it's not a necessity to a lot of audio files, believe it or not. And some people may be like, oh, you know, you're arrogant if you think room acoustic is not necessary. But you know what? I've heard a lot of rooms that didn't have acoustic treatment that sounded amazing. So how do you explain that? Well, I think it comes down to the actual speaker design. Some companies make speakers for lifestyle mm -hmm. uses, mm -hmm. right? Where, you know, they have certain waveguides that help, <laughs> you know, directivity. yeah, they help with the directivity and, you know, help it ex excel essentially in different room types. Yeah. So a lot of speakers these days have good off axis response. Um, and have waveguides to help with directivity and et cetera, et cetera. Like Bacard is a, a good example yeah. with that waveguide, 5,401 points, points of or measurements, measurements or of the waveguide and stuff. But um, yeah, that's more modern. So speakers have to do a big part of it, obviously. But we've seen uh, speakers like vintage stuff, you know, vintage audiophile guys don't really have acoustic treatment. I've never really seen one with, you know, proper, treatment like they, they would have like egg crates somewhere like <laughs> like but it's not even the first reflection point you know i i, I don't know what they, what these guys are doing if you guys are watching guys and you know you you know me <laughs> you know what i'm talking about but um i think and it sounds amazing and that just babbles my mind you know will it sound better if you have acoustic treatment eh. well it's also Maybe. not just treatment like having furniture yeah having like you know, just a couch yeah. makes such a huge difference. Yeah, and you know, compared to like an empty room where you and, hear and echo. Companies like Wilson Audio, for example, or I don't know if Focal does, but Wilson Audio for sure, because you know I used to sell Wilson Audio. They don't particularly recommend room treatment. You know, it's not necessary. And you know, Wilson Audio, if you know, is very pe peculiar about placing their speakers. I mean, they have a whole guide. Yeah, to and like what step levels of <laughs> tilt and you know really complicated really complicated that's why you need like a trained person to go in there to set it up right and so um and one of the things that they tell us to do is find the uh the zone of neutrality yes that's what they oh call yeah it. i remember you telling me about and that so that's very important and i didn't know this but you know you know i used to use like a hum device of some sort um like a frequency generator but now I use just my voice because one of the downside, I guess, or upside of doing a lot of these YouTube videos is that you have to edit these videos after, guys. You haven't noticed? So I'm very familiar with my own voice and Tujin's voice. <laughs> <laughs> so like I'm very familiar with my voice. And so if I'm just talking in the room and walking around, you know, trying to keep it at the same level. And that's the other thing, you know, doing YouTube and stuff, you're good at keeping your voice to a certain range of volume so that the mic doesn't clip and stuff like this. This is stuff oh, yeah. that most people just don't generally think when they see a YouTuber, but this is stuff that we go through. It's like, oh, you know, we, we have to make sure our volume is within this range. Even if we get excited, Wait, we have to be, yeah. Um, yeah. So I keep it, you know, in, in, in that zone. I'm just talking to myself like a maniac and, you know, my girlfriend's wondering what the hell I'm doing. And I'm walking around the room, you know, and I do this you know, most of the time a speaker comes in. Um, especially when they're difficult to set up, I do this. And I find the part of the room that sounds the most natural, like my voice to me. And you'll be surprised. Try it yourself. You'll be surprised. You'll be like, I'm not going to do that. It's like, like a ma maniac, but try it. it. You'll be amazed by, I know, what that, what that uh, looks like, you know? Uh, you go to the back of the room, your, 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 your voice sounds more uh, brighter. And as you move to the corner, and try start from the corner, and you'll believe me, move start from the corner and start moving out. Your voice gets deeper in the corner. And as you move out, your voice gets more and more like, you know, livelier. So I remember we did this mm -hmm. when we were setting up the, the Triangle Boria 3s mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you made me uh, 
<laughs> randomly. I don't know what I was doing, yelling or making random noises. tones and noises. Yeah. So, and then you find the part where, uh, you know, you find you just you're just walking and you find the part where your voice sounds the most natural. And this is important because this is you're not doing microphone checks and stuff like that. You're the person that's listening to your music. So if your voice sounds natural to you, right? Then the rest of the frequency will follow. That's the at least the idea behind it. So you find that zone of neutrality, you mark it down, and you start there. That's not the end point, but you start there, and you can you know depending on uh, you know what kind of uh, uh, you know what more you want out of the speakers, you can play around the placement from there. But that is the starting point. And this has given me a lot of thought because you know a field. Right, if you go out into the field, it's necess not necessarily room treated. It's like an open area, mm -hmm. and if you treat the room, and of course it's not an open area, but if you treat the room in a similar concept of being a open field, then you find the uh, place in which it has the most natural voice to you, as if it would sound like on the outside, right? So that's the starting point, and that's the idea behind it. And you know, quite frankly, I'm just speaking from experience. It works. Phenomenally well because I've seen rooms where there's no acoustic treatment, but it sounded absolutely fantastic. I heard no face issue. I heard perfect imaging, great sound stage, no acoustic rooms. Now this is obviously limited. Now I have never heard a room that was small that sounded amazing. It is usually bigger rooms that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. So there is limitations with this method. It's not absolute. Right? Yeah, if it's I not like big, a one thing. Yeah, move. if I had like big Wilsons here and tried to put in a zone of neutrality, it will sound better, I bet, than putting it somewhere else and not in the zone of neutrality, but it still won't sound good. I think that's our bubble tea. You want to go that, get that? That's probably our boba. <laughs> Wrong side. I'm always so bad at this. I'm so... Man, I'm so then happy nobody right wants to hear you chewing on your little bubbles, balls, tapioca balls. <laughs> tapioca balls. It's a ASMR time. Oh my god! My favorite bubble tea is taro slush. Absolute favorite. Mine's a uh, uh, taro too, but I, I can't say no to a buy one get one free. Yeah, you just, you know. Does that say something about me if I like taro slush? I think that's a lot of people's favorite, no? It's my favorite. Mm. Okay. So anyways, yeah, that's my that's my take on room acoustic treatment, right? It's not necessarily a necessity if you can get it right. I mean, if your room sounds great, then, you know. If you can but, um, compromise with speaker placement and yeah. uh, balance it out. Yeah. But if you're in a small space, or you know a medium space or whatever then you may definitely consider room acoustic treatment but it's a pretty big investment people don't realize that room acoustic treatment it's, it's it costs. investment it's it's time and then it's a bit of experimentation as well yeah it costs money man yeah it costs money but yeah that's my experience with it uh what's your what's your take i mean <laughs> that's, that's it that's your the entire experience <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it, it it's been great. I just won't go back. It's uh, I'm a I'm a pro room treatment kind of guy, and taking the time to place your speakers right, you know, making sure you have nice equal distances. And uh, oh, I will say I will say this though. Um, conversely, right, even if you have room acoustic treatment, it can sound bad. And now people are gonna be like, "The hell is he talking about?" So just because you have acoustic treatment. Doesn't mean that it will sound good. You could be too damped. You could be, you know, over damped. Over damped. Totally. And let's say you have proper acoustic treatment, right? And well, relatively proper, meaning like you follow the general guidelines and stuff. And you made um, an anacolic chamber. Well, no, no. no, no. <laughs> like, that would be extreme. You know, that would be over damping. Yeah. Um, but you know, let's say you follow the general guidelines. You that room can still sound terrible. I, I've, and you know. I, I guess if you did like measurements and did it properly, properly, like professionally, then yes. But I remember one of the uh, rooms that we had at the store that I, I worked at, Audio Excellence, just sounded absolutely batshit terrible to me. Like, <laughs> Which I keep, one? I keep, I keep, I said it in their videos. I said it in the home theater one. 
Oh yeah, I said yeah. it in you know in their videos. Like we had a, a video where we talked about the I think the legacy Focus SE speakers, and mm -hmm. you know we had to reshoot that video, and we didn't do that video because Adrian thought it was not fair because you know um, I had the I, I was basically shitting on the speakers, and I all but I did state that it was probably the room, and Adrian's like, well, what's the point of reviewing a speaker in a room that uh, right? reviewing reviewing what's reviewing. that. <laughs> But, you know, I was like, well, you know, but that room sounded terrible to me because everything you put in there is like bass heavy. It's like mid bass heavy, too. It's not it sounds bloated. And wait, I think gunky. you're talking about my sound. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so if you like bass and like gunky bass, but it was not on to me, it was not a right representation of the speaker or the system. It just sounded something wrong. And that room, I treated it. <laughs> So this is this on myself. I treated it, you know, um, you know, I was given the task to treat the room. So I followed general ru rules, you know, first reflection and, you know, the bass traps and everything. And even doing the general rule of thumb things, yes, you know, it may have sounded better, but, you know, that room was like an extension to the store. So it yeah. was built like half janky. So I'm just waiting until it falls. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I remember it being built. Yeah, so maybe it was um, the point I bring that up is maybe it has to do with the, the how, how it was built, the construction, because the the isolation between this you know this room and that the other room, the Wilson room, is not very good. The Wilson room sounded way so better. So just just for reference, there's the home theater room, and then there's another listening room called the Wilson room, uh, where there's Wilson audio speakers. Obviously, that's what it's called. So and you can if you someone if one person is demoing this room, the other person couldn't do it. Yeah. So I still remember going like, Philip, I have a demo at this time." Make sure, you know, no one's here. And then he had a demo in the other room. And we could hear each other, like, even talk. So the isolation isn't very good. Maybe the construction is the problem. But anyways, the point being is I've had experiences, not just that that room, but that, that room was, like, the 100% definition of my experience with this. But I've seen other rooms where there was acoustic treatment. It looked like it was done properly following the general principles. Didn't sound right. So... Again, you have to trust your ears. You can't just p plunge, you know, acoustic panels. What, essentially, what works for others may not work for you. Exactly. So it's just don't think that textbook stuff would work 100% of the time, right? You're just fooling yourself. So listen to listen to it, you know, and, and uh, work with your room, not against it. Oof. Okay. Word, word okay, right. sensei. And I'm going to sip on my bubble tea with that phrase, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.